Algebra 2 CRAM, New York State, Algebra 2 Regions, Common Core, Descriptive Statistics, Question 5, Mean and Population Standard Deviation. Inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to purchase your complete CRAM sessions. Let's delve into the topic. Question 5, Mean, that is the sample mean denoted with this figure, it's um, pronounced X bar and standard deviation, as previously mentioned, we're dealing with the population standard deviation represented by the lowercase Greek sigma, okay? The number of children of each of the first 41 United States presidents is given in the accompanying table. For this population, what are the mean and the population standard deviation to the nearest tenth? How many of these presidents fall within one population standard deviation from one, of the, <laughs> one population standard deviation of the mean? Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so before we jump into the solution steps, I want you to be careful not to make the assumption that this second column here um, of frequencies is an additional variable. Rather, this column is a frequency report of the number of times the variable of a particular number of children at each level occurred amongst the um, US presidents, okay, the first 41 presidents. So this frequency should tally up to 41. And if you're new to descriptive statistics, it may take you a few examples or a few problems to grasp this frequency concept. So if it feels a little uncomfortable digesting it mentally, don't worry, okay? All right, now for the solution. What we're going to do is use our calculator. Our, specifically, we're going to use the what well, I'm going to be demonstrating on the TI-84 plus graphing calculator model. And we're going to use this to summarize and interpret these data given. And we're going to get an output of some statistics, OK? If you recall from question four, if you watched any of the previous recordings, you would have recalled that a statistic is a descriptive quantity calculated from a sample of data, all right? All right, so here goes our sample and we're about to calculate, but not by hand, we're using our calculator because on an actual regents, tallying these numbers, finding the mean and the measures of spread and central tendency would actually be quite time consuming. And a lot of people who are really intelligent, they like to demonstrate their um, intelligent or eruditeness through going through long feats, but this is actually antithetical to being intelligent. Being intelligent means knowing how to do something extremely well as fast as you can, you know, without sacrificing quality. And to get the perfect output of your statistics, all you have to do is utilize your graphing calculator. That's why the technology was created in the first place. All right, so what you want to do is care first, we're going to carefully enter the number of children. This is our one variable um, in a list, okay? And the reason why we're doing that is because um, the, this one variable data can be analyzed using some special features in the statistics menu on this graphing calculator. All right, so you turn the calculator on, right? And then you hit the stats button and the screen will pop up and then you press one because you're going to edit or input your, um, your variable. And you see here, we're uh, beginning to input our variables. First, I typed in zero, then I hit enter and then it populated list one. Now I'm in the midst of typing one I'm going to hit enter, 
I keep on going all the way down. Now I'm at this level eight. Um, I'm going to input the 10th value. All right. And then um, I'm at 15, so I input the 11th data value. And then I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna hit enter. Then I'm going to hit this right arrow and shift over to list two, because although I have previously mentioned that these frequencies are not um, data values, they are associated with their respective uh, number of children variables. All right, so you have to list them on the same levels. So I'm going to go ahead and complete the same um, process as I did when inputting the number of children. So on level one, I input six by typing six, and then I hit enter and it populates list two and so forth, all the way down to um, the last value, which is a frequency of one. 15 children occurred one time amongst the first 41 United States presidents. And in order to hit that last one, all I did was type in one, enter, and it filled in list line level 11, corresponding to its variable of 15, okay? All right, so now we're going to analyze this variable and the associated frequencies. And in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and hit our statistics key again. The same screen will pop up. I press the right key to shift over to the calculations. And because I'm dealing with one variable, not two, I'm going to hit one to select the one variable statistics equation editor screen. And for our list, or you can consider this our variable, uh, list L1, the first list automatically populates. Then I have to hit the down key and it brings me down to the frequency list. So we have to tell our calculator where the frequency list is because we do have one in this particular scenario. So in order to do this, you do something interesting. You hit second stat and then the list window is gonna come up and the names of each list is the first thing you'll see. Our frequency list is not going to be L1. It's actually going to be L2. If you remember, we input the number of associated frequencies into L2. So all we have to do is hit two, and then you'll see L2 automatically populate the frequency list line. Then we hit our down arrow and to go to calculate, and then we hit enter, and it's going to calculate our one variable statistic with our associated frequencies, okay? And just as a side note, if you don't do the second step of inputting the frequency values or specifying the frequency list in our um, one variable window, our one variable statistic editor window, you'll get the wrong answer. But notice here we have the right calculation because n is 41. And this corresponds to the value um, given in our question stem. OK? All right, we did all this work. Now for some answers. Our first question, I think, was what are the population mean and the population standard deviation, although that's covered up. Well, we can see here, well, I think, well, for this population, so every, there's really no difference between calculating a sample mean and a population mean, only the number of data values. So you'll usually you see that your calculator always lists um, X bar as opposed to mu. Mu is the Greek letter that represents population mean. So we see that that rounded to the nearest tenth is going to be 3.6, okay? Because we're axed to the nearest tenth. And then for our um, population standard deviation, which is a measure of spread, how far values are away from the mean, we have 2.9 children, if that's even possible. All right, so those are our first two answers. But then the third portion is not a reported statistics. Statistics. So we're going to have to 
deduce this from the information provided, okay, they want to know how many presidents fall within one population standard deviation of the mean. And to figure this out, the first thing that we're going to have to do is find out the range that's one standard de deviation from the mean. And remember, in the positive direction as well as in the ne negative direction. So our range will look like this. Our sample standard deviation minus um, sigma. I mean, our sample mean minus the population standard deviation all the way to our sample mean plus this population standard deviation. And we just input our values of 3.6 minus 2.9 to 3.6 plus 2.9. And we get the values or the, the range um, of 0 0.7 to 6.5. Okay, now we cannot have 0 0.7 kids and we cannot have 6.5 kids but in always when you're dealing with reality you usually round up it would be incorrect to round estimate 0 0.7 at 0 because you have to go to the next value up that's included in the range so we start our quest for finding out how many presidents fall within one standard deviation at one children okay and we see that the number of presidents is two. And then we're going to go all the way up um, to six. Okay. We're not going to round up to seven. That would be incorrect. At the lower end, you round up. And at the upper end of the range for these, you know, where decimal numbers when you're dealing with whole number integers or whole people or whole items, you round down at the upper end of the range, okay? That's just a little rule of thumb for you to keep in mind. Eight is a free um, for two children. And remember, we're going all the way down to six, so we have to add six to that, to um, two plus eight, and that's like 10, plus six is 16, plus seven, uh, what's seven plus six? I don't know like 20, 23, I don't know, um, plus another 3 is going to be 26, plus 5 is going to give you a total of 31. So we have that 31 presidents fall within one standard deviation of the mean, okay? All right, that was a lot to take in, but you did a great job. Good luck studying.